Hello folks. It's going to be something of a different video. So I was just watching some economic policy type videos regarding Germany of the 1930s, sort of post-1933. And then I noticed that a lot of it's to do with A-level studies, like European history and history, German history, this type of thing. Economics, even. Now, there's a, a really funny underlying thread, which took me back to my sort of school years, whatever. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in past videos, but basically, and you'll have to excuse me tone, and if I sneeze and stuff, I've got terrible A fever. It's like, it's really bad right now. But I think this video is quite important because it addresses some really interesting points, or at least I aim to. And those points are concerning this tag, the tag lines. So all of the economic history uh, of Germany, as I say, takes me back to my school years. I studied economics, I studied history, and, you know, we we used to have a lot of discourse in, in the class. Because my, my parents were quite frugal, and that meant that I didn't have much money. <laughs> I had to earn it. So, you know, I was a paper boy by the time I was, I think, 12 or 13, something like that. I was, you know, I was helping because I wasn't old enough to take on a paper role myself. I would help and my mate would give me a pound or one pound fifty, whatever at the time, of his six pound fifty. I think that was Sunday mornings because the load was too heavy. So you used, you used to have to get up early and the buses were, would only run every hour, something like that. And to have to travel across the town. I, I grew up in a modern town. So the thing is, it, it was two pence then on the bus and it, the value is still one pence the omnibus was at one pence for hun like for a hundred years or something so when it went up to two pence it was unheard of you know it was like a complete hundred percent increase then it went up to four pence after that so um, that was just for one journey you couldn't get those tickets where you could travel all over and stuff at as, as I knew it anyway. So I was at school. I was paying an interest in economics. Because obviously nothing made sense. You know. For example. You go to work. Like help. I was helping my mate do his paper round. So the economics were. The papers were getting delivered. The people were paid money. The paper man the distributor he would collect the money and then he would pay um, the worker like that so it, you know the rewards are there like the the work goes in and the recompensation for the work comes out now this does not seem to be the case with much of the work <coughs> um this does not seem to be the case with much of the work in today's society. As we watch debt increase, you know, you can work, 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 and debt will increase, like the, the national debt, the global debt, the banker's debt, the austerity, the, the, the debt scale just keeps going up. So they say that, the, you know, there's no return from it, like, well, there is a return, and that's the history, the German history of 1933 onwards. So, a lot of the um, A-level history and a lot of these videos I'm, I'm looking at, they're going, oh yes, it was very good, but it was propaganda. Oh yes, it was very good, but it was just a trick. Oh yes, it was very good, but this, but that, but the other. And it's like, hang on, what exactly did they do? 
They put people to work. They put food on the table. They were actually building something. They were putting investment into something that was building up. So that's like an umbrella way to look at the thing. You know, it's not about, um, I'll give you this. Oh, but take this with you. I'll give you that. Oh, but take this with you. You know, like the women. It's saying about the women in the Weimar Republic. The prostitution was rife. You know, women women adored by the regime what, what had come in to take them away from what had happened before in the Weimar Republic because the Weimar Republic was a failed republic. People were starving. People were committing suicide. The suicide rates were off the charts. You know, these are the things that um, the regime changed, aimed to fix, and largely had fixed, and was still fixing in 1936 even. You know, they, they were reaching out to try and fix them. The economic change was a, a massive um, a task. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, yes, we've got the economic change now, and economic miracles happen. No, the, the, the people worked hard to, to build something, you know, to return on the investment that they were making in themselves. And this is what the regime change did. It allowed people to get that return on investment in themselves. This is why national pride was stoked to the maximum. Like, you know, the, the people couldn't be anymore prideful of, of their own, um, you know, their own country and the, the, the work that they were endeavouring to achieve. And the plan was set like it was like, you know, it wasn't baseless rumour. This was like the people were on board with the action plan. The action plan was to make sure that everyone had, like, an existence that was on another level, you know, on on the on the level of what um, of what the plan sets out to do. It's not like a dream. It's a it's a workable plan and and you know largely this is where the rhetoric goes wobbly so as i say it took me back to my years in school because nothing made sense in studying these areas you had all of this rhetoric attached oh but they oh but this you know oh this but this bad thing yes the economics um, people did get put back to work people were starting to have um, a, a more well-developed family unit and they were having more children and food was more readily accessible clothing was of a higher standard you know the the roads were of a higher standard the housing was of a higher standard everything was of a higher standard because the standards were being raised and the standards were being kept maintained and and being you know built on that those standards to increase the further standards because it it's practically doable like <laughs> like you have the workers who do it and that's what they do so so in in the regime change they focused on the men doing the work and the women looking you know to have children to increase the population in order to bring about um like a, an, a population growth that was what was seen as what was required because after the first world war there had been you know millions of deaths so the country needed to recover it needed to recover its population it needed to recover its econ economy so the two go in tandem don't they you don't continue to have a fallen population and expect the economy to to grow to the point where the population is not then going to boom the whole idea of having I mean what are you going to do sit around in coffee shops drinking beer and smoking and like work for decadence no you're going to work for posterity and and that's what it's all about it's about pushing um, pushing a narrative that is wholesome you know, and that's what that's what the regime of the day 
did. It didn't bring about a lowering of standards, you know, back into the Weimar standards where inflation was killing people and people were having to share rooms for rent and the landlords were just tyrants, you know, and the, the, the money was, you had to wheelbarrow it round and stuff like that and it was worthless for buying a, a loaf of bread or something by the time you'd uh, asked for the price of the loaf of bread, the, the the rate had gone up. I don't know how they kept tabs on those prices, but this seems to be the consistent message from the Weimar Republic and how it was, uh, you know, ridiculously out of proportion, certainly in contrast to the regime change with um, the economic plan that they drafted and implemented. And the thing is, is like, on the communist side, that that was um, geographically, you know, quite near to the German side, which was being successful. And also on the English speaking side, you've got like Great Britain and America. And then there's also France and Spain and Italy. Italy was starting to boom. France was fine. You know, the, these were the allies of the Germans and they were fine. But as we know, the communists that didn't work there was all sorts of um, collective farm and famines forced famines you know countless tens of millions of people died in um, for example the Holodomor in the Russian famine in the Chinese famine all of these famines which were the result of uh, Marxism the result of Marxist economic plans, like from Das Kapital or from the Communist Manifesto, like Marxism doesn't work. So the thing is, is that the German model was working, which is why we see America reacting to, you know, there was favorable concern about what was going on in Germany. Why wasn't it happening in America? So your man drafts the New Deal. Um, which ultimately turns into war and austerity that we have today. You know, look at, look at what Trump and Biden have brought America. They, they've continued to make the country of a lower state than it could easily be. You know, the resources and the ingenuity of the American people is off the charts, like in the resource potential. You know, the human resource potential is not being harnessed and it's not being promoted or stimulated to grow that's happening in China in communist China which is then being then um, substituted into Africa which is largely becoming communist so China has got like set to fail because they've already now been overtaken um, in their population by India do you see what I mean? So, so China was a, a big hub of Chinese people. Now it's getting dispersed into Africa. And all of the people who were agricultural workers who had their own family farms are now being moved into flats in the cities. So they're, they're giving up all of those, you know, what, what we get told as thousands of years of heritage or whatever that's being taken away by the communist regime and we get painted the picture that living in a flat is a um, is you know is the like the manhattan way and that's the better way and all like this um which may have its merits on the on the front but look at the economic despair that's come from it but we're not going away from economic despair we're going further and further into it Covid has largely been like a, um, a stimulus package in order to keep it away from collapsing further because it is a collapsing economic plan. That That's what we're involved in. The manufacturing is, you know, it, it's brainless. It's, um, what's the Disney movie with Mickey Mouse as the magician's apprentice? And he just keeps making the water, um, you know, he makes the broom 
carry the buckets of water but he doesn't know how to stop and that's what we're seeing this senseless manufacturing of material goods that offer nothing really but further debt which serves the banks because the banks are you know they, they're the ones who ran communism and they run sort of like the das capital version of capitalism which is not a, a workable solution for stimulating human growth which is what 1933 germany onwards was until 1942 when you know they start getting carpet bombed by the idiots who are in power now or at least the the same sort of uh, people who've taken over that mantle are in power now as we're in power then <clears throat> um, and you can contrast it like there are other success stories in history Louis the Fourteenth, Julius Caesar, ancient Egypt, you know, there are pockets of these um, types of great economies on the rise and they always uh, come a cropper by the same people who don't exactly what happened to Germany as would happen to any nation. So there's your A-level history for you. It's all a crock of... <laughs> It's all a load of rubbish, like every bit of tagline that they add on. Oh, it was propaganda. Oh, it was a trick. Oh, it was this, that. Oh, it was the other. No, it, it worked. It was a functional plan. Study uh, what, what went on and take away all the negative words, which are just mere rhetoric, and look at the plan of what the people were actually doing. I, I went to Munich and I sought out, um, well, I went to Munich, sorry, I went to Germany, Italy, Austria, Spain, France, Belgium, in order to understand what has happened, you know, what, what, what do those people say? And what the people say is completely different to what the education says, what the television says, what the media says. It's a... Um, You'd have, to, you'd have to get your magnifying glass out and start putting the pieces together. Like, the thing is, is, like, the plan was halted. It was halted because of emergency situations in, in you know, in state of war. And they weren't geared up for war. They were forced into war. And the thing is, is, like, the war was largely fabricated by the Versailles Treaty. That was the whole idea of the Versailles Treaty was to keep the Germans under under hook. Because the actual plan of German expansionism to raise standards and to raise levels of not only consciousness but to raise levels of standards of living, it it goes back to uh, to like early Prussia and even Peter the Great of Russia with Catherine the Great, who came to Russia and helped Russia build up like that. You can see with Alexander the Second and other czars after him, they sort of, they harnessed this idea, this ethic of work pays, you know, and, and that's, that's what is missing now. The work, yeah, you can go to work, but it's the work that you produce. The production value is different. The production value is not a means to an end now. It's just it's just all lots of loose ends and there's no, no tying up of the loose ends in order to make a national uh, economy, a nation's economy, like a strong economy that is, is a good footing then as a foundation for the nation to continue. So like I'm in England and you couldn't get a stronger country than, than Great Britain in world history, you know, but the place is swarming with drugs. It's got homeless people everywhere. The, the immigration um, thing is like, it could easily be sorted out with the wealth without having to bring the immigrants here. You know, the, the power of the, the power brokers in parliament, so as we're led to believe, they could easily change the course of lesser nations, you know, lesser strong nations, nations where the refugees have to come from 
and they don't go to their own sort of like you know many of them are um of certain religious persuasions but they don't go to the the nations that are housed that you know that cater for those religions they have to come to here so it makes you look at the world war ii situation as being well the communists the bolsheviks were really the the victors but in the west we're told it was the americans and the british you know even though we're not explicitly told that we're certainly not explicitly told that it was the bolsheviks but the bolsheviks did win and the bolsheviks had the main power the main levers of power and still do because the bolsheviks when you when you look trotsky lenin you know you go to lazar there's a whole slew of the same people who pop up in these times which you know if i even mention anything around the name then the channel is in jeopardy like so there's hopefully something that can point in the direction more conducive to what happened without being all your head full of bolshevik propaganda which is pushed today to say like oh yes it was this it was that but there was a dark shadow looming you know that's all a load of rubbish the dark shadow won so far so i hope that helps and um, yeah take no notice to the educators they're all miseducators or maleducators